Welcome to another edition of our Covisory Desk Side Chats. I'm Nigel Smith. I'm Chris Ink. And today we want to talk to you about debt settlements with the IAD because Chris and I have been doing quite a lot of these, strangely enough. And many of them still link back to COVID, don't they, Chris? Yeah, and people who are finding the consequences of COVID and, and the economic situation. So one of the problems we've got is that we're seeing a lot of debt, app debt applications to the IAD made now aren't getting it proved and accepted when people thought they might have. So Chris, why is that happening? Because in essence, there's not a full picture being provided to the IAD, so they can go down their criteria and work out if there is a solution, this is a viable solution. There needs to be a plan presented to the IAD and that meets their criterias. And those criterias, are Nigel, what, what, what do you Well, I think the first thing is you've got to put yourself in the shoes of the IAD. The IAD wants to know, why haven't you paid your tax? Really simple question. So obviously file your returns on time, even if you can't pay the tax. Get in touch with the IAD quickly. Why can't you pay your tax? What's the problem? Are you a recidivist offender? Are you well known to the IAD? You're probably not going to get a great reception if that's the case. And more importantly, if it is a new problem, how is it going to sort itself in the future? But most importantly, how are you going to pay the money back? How are you actually going to get funds when you haven't been able to pay them on time? So in our experience, most of the problems have been lack of supply of information, mm -hmm. hasn't it? And, and, and that information would include up-to-date bank statements and forecast cash flows, what's the plan of, of money coming through to meet your obligations, and secondly, have you met your obligations in terms of return filing? So if you think of the IAD as being a creditor, like your bank lending your money, when you're, when you're collecting debts, the best debt is the one that comes to you and says, hey, I can't pay you, there's a reason for this, um, rather than the one you've got to ring 20 times before you get someone. So if you want to get a good reception at the IAD, file your returns on time, even if you can't pay, and the quicker you get in touch with them, the better, even if they say, look, we can't pay, we'll be back to you in a couple of weeks, we're working on a plan, we're going to tell you what's happening. Now, just as an aside, an example for you and I, 5 million GST, we went to the IAD, most people would have been made bankrupt and the companies wound up. In that case, because we could demonstrate the perfect storm, why it happened, we could demonstrate there was assets and equity to meet the tax and how that would occur. It would rely on the IAD hanging in there for a couple of years and waiting until properties got sold. But the other half of that was we communicated regularly with the IAD. We got down to, what, monthly meetings with them, I think, at one stage, just to give the IAD an update. So consistent flow of information once you've negotiated as well. Yeah, yeah and the, the ability to provide, again, that information that they want. Yeah. Forecasted cash flows are great tools for, for the IAD taking your losses. And, and under promise and over deliver. Don't make promises you can't keep. You're better to promise less and, and deliver a bit more and give yourself some wriggle room as well because things don't always work out as we want. Um, and the, the thing to add is that actions are, are, are far better than words. If you can demonstrate actions that you've taken to um, settle the debt or to go to make payments or to get yourself in a better position to make payments, the ID look at that far uh, in a far better light than a whole lot of words. And money talks. Yep. If you can give them something up front when you owe the money, great. So Chris, you know, if the ID's saying no, there's got to be a reason for it, doesn't it? Yes, and it would be useful to look at what they say to you and, and the correspondence and identify what is it that you're missing or have a discussion with them about what criteria that you fail to meet their, um, their sign off on. And, and provide that and look to provide that information if necessary. Look, we, we went back to the ID four times before we got a particular amount on a settlement. But what we did manage to do is each time we gave the ID more information so they understood that that was our best offer. Yeah. You know, it's a bit like playing poker. You, you go to the ID and say, it's my best offer. They say no and you give them more. And of course, if they say, well, your first offer was your best offer, now you've got a better one. If we say no again, are you going to give us an even better one? So you've got to be consistent as well in your dealings where your credibility's out the window. Really yeah. wasn't my best offer. Right. And, and there's also that communication. You've opened the doors of communication. You're now talking. Yeah. There's a, there's a two-way conversation going about the situation at hand and, and providing that information. There. So we've got to stand in their shoes and understand why they're saying no. So look, it's difficult dealing with the IAD, but 90% of the time it is communication. So I've been Nigel Smith. I'm Chris Singh. And it's been our pleasure to have you to another one of our co-advisory desk side chats. We look forward to hearing from you soon.